Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Mr. Kelton Jones. Now, this man wears many hats, and we're going to get into everything he does. I mean, he works in films and TV, and, and he's actor and producer, cinematographer, writer, all these great things. But let's get to know you. So tell us about you, Mr. Jones. Uh, well, what do you want to know? Uh, well, first of all, being a fellow Texan, um, I want to hear about where you were born and raised. Uh, I was born in a really uh, small town called Buffalo, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, uh, but beautiful little farm, farm town, uh, less than 2,000 population. Um, uh, we lived there, family lived there for like six generations. Wow. So it was, uh, you know, deep Texas roots. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so what'd you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you saying? I was going to say, so what, what was your favorite things to do as a kid? Um, well, we had a lot of, uh, uh, a, you know, a lot of pasture and whatnot, but uh, not a lot of people. So mostly it was running around and, uh, you know, improvised explosives, you know, things, you know, kids stuff, you know, like whatever <laughs> you do in the, <laughs> in the South. There was, um, my mom had a flower shop downtown and right next door was a movie theater. And so, uh, you know, I was often there, like, catching whatever after matinees and stuff I could. So, you know, that was a big part from early on. Uh, were, you, were you like me when I was out on my uncle's farm? We'd like to get on the tractor and just take it all over the place and tear up the, the pastures and stuff. We didn't get to tear up the pastures, but, yeah, we, we had our share of, uh, you know, we had stock ponds and stuff. We could go catfishing and swimming mm. and stuff in, and, you know, uh, that kind of Super, super country stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Picking watermelons, you know, all of that. Oh, I hear you. So, um, you said talked about the theater um, close to your to your mom's house. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, it was just a small uh, theater, you know, like it would run, you know, one movie at a time. But uh, I just remember like uh, being there and watching, you know, the the matinees that were more kid friendly, um, which was like early seventies. So. Um, you know, as, as much time as I could spend in, in that big dark room, I could. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, it was pretty cool. My uh, uh, my parents were always big film fans. Like I remember, uh, we were talking about. We went to the drive-in the other night and saw Princess Bride. I took oh. my sons there, and uh, uh, it reminded me of going with my parents to see uh, Indiana Jones in the drive-in, uh, oh. the, the original. So that of, that was pretty cool. One of my favorite all-time movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Raiders was brilliant. Wasn't it? So um, we had a theater right around the corner for where I grew up. And anyway, it's since closed. But the last movie I remember seeing there was Empire Strikes Back. Oh, wow. But just something about the 70s, because that was the last time I remember going to the theater and actually watching cartoons before the movie started. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, my favorite was um we got to see uh the mighty heroes do you remember that uh i don't think so what was that that was the one you had uh rope man and cuckoo man and uh, i think the strong man and all these other goofy characters um i remember cuckoo man he would go into a cuckoo clock and he'd come out dressed in his costume and Baby man had a bottle he would use to like whack people with. <laughs> that's, that sounds amazing. I, I've got to find that. <laughs> that actually sounds like a lot of fun. YouTube it. It's on YouTube. The oh, Mighty what, Heroes. The Mighty Heroes. I'm writing that down. Yes, definitely. Because uh, th see, that was one of my favorite parts of childhood too. Was watching all those great cartoons. You know, if you remember the original Hercules cartoon and uh, Adventures of Waldo Kitty and, and Scooby Doo and Wacky oh, Waste yeah. Racers, and all. <laughs> a little bit later, I remember my mom actually. Um, she let me skip school one day, and we went to see uh, the Road Warrior together when I was like, I don't know, 
10 or 11, whenever that came out. And uh, I just remember like her being like, maybe this wasn't the best movie to bring my <laughs> you know, And I'm like, yeah. You know, I'm like figuring out how to make like rocket launcher, uh, you know, wrist, wrist uh, crossbows and things afterwards. It was pretty oh, cool. One of the best Mel Gibson movies ever, man. Yep. Come on. How do you beat Road Warrior? <laughs> I've, I've actually got a, I've got a good Mel Gibson story. Um, I worked on uh, The Passion of the Christ. Right, right. I, I did a lot of the um, uh, visual effects for that. And at one point, we were shooting uh, a scene. It was the last scene of the movie uh, where, uh, you know, he's on the cross and whatnot. And what they had done is they, they built a 16-foot cross with a, a full-size animatronic version of Jim Caviezel. Um, and it looked exactly like him. It was amazing, but it was like, you know, fully... Um, motion activated animatronic so that that uh, they could film it for long periods of time because you couldn't actually put somebody on a cross for that length of time as it takes to shoot uh, you, you would kill them for real <laughs> but um, anyway so we had this thing set up and um, we, we were actually at, at this point like they'd already shot principal photography so we were in Burbank filming and uh, we had we we're in the back parking lot and we had it all sort of tented out so you couldn't see it and uh, I, I was sitting next to Mel and this truck pulled up and it was a big um, semi tractor trailer. And on with big letters at a white cap with big red letters, it said G O D. And then on the back, the, the thing said G O D, which was like, it's a trucking company, whatnot. And uh, it, it pulls up and I'm like, uh, Mel, God's here. And, and he turned around and he looked and he saw the truck and he laughed so hard. He actually fell out of his chair. It was really funny. <laughs> well, now you got to tell me because uh, this has got to be an awesome thing you you got to see mel gibson playing road warrior as a kid and then you get to work with him on a movie well i mean what was that experience like when you actually met him in person um pretty cool actually he's he's um an amazingly talented director like he really understands um he understands the camera, he understands frame rates, like he, he really has an, an amazing technical knowledge as well as being a really strong storyteller. Um, you know, unfortunately, he's had a lot of uh, personal issues, but as, a, as an artist, uh, he's really quite brilliant. Um, you know, uh, his, his film, I'm blanking on the name right now. Uh, what was the one with the freedom? Uh, what was the name of that oh, one? Oh, 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 my God. Yeah, brain fart, brain fart. Um, yeah, I just had that. How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I know that movie like the back of my hand. Yeah, uh, that, that movie was incredible. I mean, like, like all of his films have been. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, he's a uh, you know it, definitely interesting guy. He, he reminded me of um, of Riggs, you know, uh, from Lethal Weapon. Oh like yeah. He, he actually is like that in real life. Like he has that same kind of manic energy, and whatnot. But like I said, su super nice, super professional. Um, really appreciative of the people that that are working with him. Yeah, it would it, you know? Of course, I know he's had his issues and stuff, but. Quite honestly, who in in Hollywood hasn't really had a whole lot of issues? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you spend your whole life getting over your childhood, which you know, I feel like a lot of it's that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a whole nother topic right there. I mean, we could spend a whole um, episode just talking about that kind of stuff. But um, let's go back. You uh, went to Stephen F. Austin, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Tell me about the campus, man. Uh, have, have you been to the Stephen F. Austin? It's pretty, it's a gorgeous campus. It's really nice. I've, I've driven by there. I haven't actually been in the campus, but. Yeah, it's a really, uh, it's, it's a great school. Like they've got um, uh, a, a really great film department and theater department. Um, it's, they're known for forestry and, and for nursing. Like those are kind of their uh, uh, big majors that come out of there. But uh, it, it's in the middle of the Piney Woods. So it's, it's, you know, beautiful area anyway, but it's just, it's a beautifully manicured campus and uh, just really, you know, it's good people, you know, like, you know, you, you know, being from Texas, it's a lot of people that are just, you know, big hearts and, you know, open that's, arms. You know. That's the campus that's out there by Huntsville, right? Uh, no, it's in Nacogdoches. Okay, okay, uh, the other, okay, I got you, I got so you. So it's more, more East Texas. 
Okay, yeah, neck of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest town in Texas. <laughs> right, get, you know, Odessa and all that out that way. Heck yeah. yeah. But, um, so, I mean, you, uh, you loved the, the theater as a kid. So that love of theater, is that what you really got you um, interested in doing that for a living? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, uh, you know, growing up uh, watching Star Wars and Star Trek and whatnot, like, uh, you know, we would recreate stunts with our bikes and we were, you know, making our own ramps and, you know, I broke so many bones, I can't even keep track. Um, but, but we were always like recreating stuff or creating our own movies. Uh, uh, there was a movie called uh, uh, Hooper, uh, Burt Reynolds, where he played a stuntman. You know, oh, yeah. So, like, that, that was a uh, huge, huge influence on us. So, you know, I think it, at probably the, the earliest interest I had was being a stuntman. <laughs> Which, luckily, I grew out of that phase. <laughs> that I wouldn't have uh, lasted too long, I don't think. Um, <laughs> would have been one of those stories you heard about, guy explodes on, you know, <laughs> whatever. But, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, you, you know, that sort of interest. Uh, uh, my mom took me to a set when I was like seven uh, for a movie called Convoy that uh, Sam Peckinpah was directing. Um, I don't know if you know Sam's where he did The Wild Bunch. I mean, he's an amazing, you know, one of the most iconic uh, Western directors. Uh, so that was really, really pretty cool. And then when I was 16, I got cast in a, in a film. And then uh, they let me help the crew afterwards. And, and they ended up hiring me to work on the rest of the movie. And they had me doing everything from pyrotechnics to camera work to, you know, we had big epic battle scenes and horses and cannons and, you know, mortars. It was pretty well. Oh, man. That Nothing scene? they would ever let a 16-year-old do now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I had, I had mortars going off it. I, like, I'm, my job was to hold the camera at one point um, because of all the, the blast going off. And you had uh, horses charging at the camera while explosions were going off. And so, you know, these horses were freaking out. There's like, you know, musket firing going off. Um, I was basically in the middle of a stampede, but not smart enough to realize how much actual danger I was in at the time. It was so much fun. It was amazing. <laughs> a 16 year old's dream. I get yeah. to blow stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had a very different, uh, you know, growing up in the seventies, you know, uh, blowing things up was kind of what we did for fun. Right. You don't yeah. get to do that anymore. Getting model cars and sticking M eighties in it and blowing them up. And exactly. Exactly. Yeah, my uncle teaching me how to make gunpowder, you know, and, and making stuff. And it, it's amazing that I still have fingers, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's what happened to a lot of my action figures back then, because my cousins would take them and blow them up, and oh yeah, you know, I'd be stuck with you know Star Wars pieces all over the place or GI Joes, and and just look how much that stuff's worth nowadays. Yeah, we, yeah, we'd set them on fire and film them with our little um, Super Eight cameras. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not surprising to me that, that I ended up uh, doing so much visual effects work because, you know, it was a lot of that, you know, being a kid blowing up toys. <laughs> so your biggest interest is like science fiction kind of stuff, right? Um, yeah, a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, horror, science fiction, you know, genre films are, uh, they're kind of the most fun to make. Uh, I do a lot of like, you know, heartfelt drama stuff and comedy too, but it, it's a real, it, it's a pretty broad base. Uh, I got to work with um, Robert Zemeckis, Ooh. who's one of my favorite directors. Um, so I, I shot a, a, a documentary that his wife directed. And so I got to work with, uh, with both of them. That was pretty cool because that was like another chance where, you know, I got to meet one of my film heroes. Cause, you know, right. uh, back to the future, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cast Away, Back to the Future, Death Becomes Her. Yeah, like so many of my favorite films, uh, you know, he, he directed. He really, he was really, you know, being a, a fan of of, uh, of really kind of heartfelt stories and of visual effects. He's he's been really at the forefront of of combining um, great effects with great storytelling, mm -hmm. and he, he's always like on that cutting edge of like creating new new ways of doing things. Like he's always years ahead of of whatever's going on in the market. Uh, but he, he always keeps it about the story. Like it never. Um, pulls away like a lot of a lot of directors they get sort of overwhelmed by uh, the effects or the flash or whatever and and with his work it always seems to be about the people you know 
Yeah, I mean, you see films nowadays, they've got great special effects, the CGI, all that kind of stuff, but the story gets lost because they're so focused on, let's make this look as visually appealing as we possibly can. Right. You know, it's very disappointing, you know, he's like, man, those were so, such great special effects, but man, where was the storyline? Yeah, if, if, for me, if, if I don't care about the character, you know, if I don't care about what that person's going through and I can't be empathetic with them, um, then it's not going to pull me in, you know, and, and it doesn't matter how much flash there is if you don't have, uh, if you don't have heart, you know, so like that's always, you know, one of the things that I look for in, in scripts and stories um, that I'm doing. It's like, you know, does it have the heart? Well, I mean, you look at, uh, was it John Boyega, the guy that played Finn in the, the Force Awakens? In the rest of the, you know, the last three Star Wars movies, they started out real strong with his story, you know, and I thought they really could have built on it. And then it kind of just, I don't know, it flattened out to me. Yeah. Yeah. They, they sort of lost the thread with that. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's, that's what happens when you start bringing in, um, you know, a different director for every project, you know, and um, you don't have that narrative thread of one person sort of telling an overarching story. So it gets a little tough. Yeah, uh, George Lucas, I mean, that, how do you beat what he did anyways? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think when they brought in Kathleen Kennedy, it kind of made everything go downhill from there. It's just my opinion. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, George's wife is a phenomenal filmmaker on her, her own right. She was the editor for all of his projects, but she was so involved with the development pro project uh, process of, of those films mm -hmm. and the story and so she really had a lot to do with um, bringing in a lot of the heart of a lot of the films like uh, you know I think she was the one that pushed to, that uh, Obi-Wan had to die in the original one um, and like a lot of small details that she brought in that really um, made it such a, an amazing film so it's, it's something you know that that's something I think that a lot of people don't don't realize is that film is, is very much a collaborative art and and everybody who's involved uh, influences it in some way you know and sometimes it's just the smallest little tweak but you know uh, movies are, are made or broken based on uh, the whole community that makes it you know it's not just the one person well when you think about TV shows and movies that are successful and the little witty things that you pick up on and in, in, um, you know, little details here and there and the minds that have gotten together to think these things up, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, I mentioned to you how much I love to watch The Office and, and uh, I know you've said you've seen the UK version and I like the UK version, don't get me wrong, but um, <laughs> the, the, the little jokes and stuff that are throughout the whole series, you, you wonder, what in the world were these guys thinking or, you know, the little things in life that they picked up on to, to bring these jokes together. And, right. you know, and, and George Lucas with, I mean, the guy was steeped in film lore and he took stuff from old movies and, you know, Westerns and operas and things like that and created this whole world out of it. And um, I see like you work with, with, uh, David Espinosa and Craig Aarons and and how they've taken and they've really like took a story down to its core and they don't make it too over the top in the details that they put on it to tell a story without having to put a whole bunch of gore and stuff into it yeah. um, that that's that's some talent right there how is that like working with those guys they're really an, an amazing team. I was actually thinking about uh, thinking about that this morning. Uh, they're both, they have such a calm, kind demeanor. Um, like that, that's one of the, like the nicest sets I think I've, I've been on where there was so much respect for, for the crew and, and for the cast coming from David and coming from, from Craig that like, it really felt like uh, not only they great, storytellers but they really create a nice safe environment for the people that are working with them and it really you know it, it felt like a family you know it felt like we were really making something um and and especially in, in the independent world you know it's it, their passion project at the end of the day you know you're doing it because you love movies you know and you're just trying to make something good everybody's just trying to do the best that they're they're able to and and to think that like um that was their first film together um and and that 
they managed to pull it off in the way that they did um, is really impressive. I really got tremendous respect for both of them. Yeah, I've only seen the evil down the street so far, and um, I'm so waiting for the chromes to come out. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so fun. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember seeing like bits of it. I haven't seen it yet, but it was like, it, it looks really brilliant. It's really and fun. of course, it's got Demon Hunter coming out, and uh, the, he was telling me, uh, Craig was telling me about another one that they were doing, um, more like a, I think a love story or something like that. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll think about it at two o'clock in the morning. That's usually what happens. <laughs> well, just like the Mel Gibson movie, I'll think of the name of it about two o'clock in the morning and I'll wake up. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, they were both. <laughs> they're both great actors too, which is really really interesting. Like you don't often see, uh, you know, producers and directors that can jump in and fill roles. Um, uh, with, with, especially with working with Craig, uh, I had such a hard time not laughing my butt off just doing the scenes with him because he was so funny like he's so good uh and and uh, you know david was just brilliant as the the priest father bob like so good both those guys oh yeah father that, that's what i was calling him father bob your name's not <laughs> david anymore you're father bob <laughs> and i tell him i said look dude without the little soul patch and the long hair i don't recognize you man <laughs> <laughs> And, and Craig, that that whole uh, that first scene, I seen him with his his wife when he walks up to the neighbor's house to introduce him to the neighborhood. <laughs> it's like you know, shut up, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, there was a. I, I think they had to cut it a couple of times because the first uh, first version of the movie was actually really funny, uh, and and you know, the credit to them that they, they didn't go, well, this is a comedy now and, and, and make it into a comedy. Like, they're like, no, this, this, that's not, that's not the story we're telling. So let's make it, let's, you know, uh, pull it back and, and use the moments that make sense to, to make this a really uh, powerful drama. But, uh, you know, we, we were having so much fun making it, you know, and there was so much going on there that, uh, yeah, I think Greg said, like, you could cut that movie like eight different ways and get different films out of it. But it was, uh, it, it was such a great ensemble. Like everybody that was uh, involved was so much fun to work with, and we just really enjoyed. Um, we enjoyed the process, you know, which is great. It's it's too bad he didn't have the money to make it into eight different movies. That would have been fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> the evils down the street, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, we'll go back to uh, talking about your your newest project with those guys. But um, tell me about. Walker, Texas Ranger. I gotta know about Chuck Norris, man. Uh, Chuck was amazing. Like he was really. I, I worked on another film uh, that he was in called Sidekicks. Uh, that yes. Son directed. Mattress Mac, uh, I think. Yeah. yeah did exactly. the uh, the uh, uh, he he gave money to get that off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, John Jonathan Brandis was the star of that. Uh, he was in uh, Sequest and a much other other films um but uh great film actually it was like really fun to, to work on well it's not a great film it was great to work on it was fun it was a basically a karate kid uh, uh homage i guess you could say <laughs> but they uh, they were really a blast to work with and walker was great um like such a cool team the people who made uh walker like the whole crew was the same people who had worked together on the, the show dallas and so oh, wow. they, they all had such an incredible rapport and they'd all been working together uh, for years. And that was a really cool one. And, and being a fan of pyrotechnics growing up, like every week we blew something up, which was amazing. Like we blew up cars. At one point we blew up an entire neighborhood because uh, there was a, a neighborhood that, that they had to buy uh, because they were expanding the airport. So in order to do that, you, you have to own so much land outside to give the planes, you know, if they run out of runway or whatever. Um, so they have to have so much property. So they bought this entire really nice neighborhood that they, they had to demolish. So uh, somehow the production got a hold of it and they're like, okay, well, we're doing a mad bomber. So like you had like Chuck Norris running from house to house, pulling people out of their houses. And then the houses were exploding and the boats were exploding and cars were exploding. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> like the nineties was all about blowing stuff up. It was great. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. And you know, sidekicks meant so much to the city of Houston. It really oh, did. Yeah. Yeah, they were 
really counting on that movie and uh, I thought it was an excellent movie. It's just sad what happened to the the kid that starred in it. Yeah. Um, uh, that's that's another show in itself as well. But um, so I mean, you've worked on all these great shows and movies, and 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 now you've lowered yourself down to working with David and Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I think I elevated to argue with that. <laughs> I, you know, I have to give them a hard time. They're they're great guys. They really are. I love talking with those guys, and and they've helped me in so many ways. And um, I mean, you you got to get into detail about not only working with them, but on the set itself. Um, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> um, like I said it was it was a really great environment. Um, you know, we, we hit the ground running the, the first day. Uh, that scene you were talking about with Craig, that we, we shot that the first day. And um, it, was, it was just a really kind of cool environment. You know, the, the, the days weren't crazy long, like what you hear about on a lot of productions. Um, it was really smoothly ran. Um, everybody worked together really well. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I don't even know. You know, uh, other than like, you know, we had tremendous support from, from uh, the community, you know, people that were, you know, letting us use locations and, uh, you know, they, they managed to get incredible um, uh, facilities, you know, uh, we went to, to one town and, and, and they totally just welcomed us with, with op open arms and, and, uh, you know, we got to meet like the whole city council and like, it was really incredible. Like it was, it was pretty cool. It's a, it's a great process. So no, no scary stories to tell about that set, huh? Um, no, nothing really. Uh, you know, we we were pretty blessed. We didn't have any actual demons involved. Uh, <laughs> I, I did work on a haunted set once, so that was pretty wild. That was actually in Texas. Yeah, they they told me a little bit about um, the evil down the street. How they had some pretty cool little incidents happen. So I, I was just wondering if it followed them around. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know, just got to throw that in there. What the heck? So um, what about all the uh, the stars of the show? What, what was it like working with them? Um, they were great. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, trying to think if there's anything particular that, that stands out other than you know, we, like I said, we had a lot of fun working with them. Uh, Elena was great. Uh, you know, we actually like spent time before the movie just hanging out with each other uh, to, to create a, a more of a sense of a relationship. Because a lot of times you see that with um, people that are thrown into a, a project, they don't actually hang out before the show. And so the first time they're meeting is the first time they're working together. And so there's always this, this sort of distance. But uh, you know, we actually spent time hanging out. We'd done the, uh, we drove down and did a test screening together. And um, just getting to spend time with people uh, when you're not filming uh, really kind of helps to create that bond, you know. And um, both of the, the, the daughters were amazing, uh, very talented actresses. Um, I just remember like, you know, because we'd watch, uh, you know, when we weren't for filming, we were watching the other people perform and I was always, really impressed with, with how honest and natural they were. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but, you know, talking to uh, uh, to them about Elena and how she didn't let the, uh, the thought of being the star of the movie or whatever change the fact that she was going to help no matter what. She was doing makeup. She was bringing people coffee and, and, and food. She didn't, didn't make that like, oh, that's beneath me. She... Right. she pitched in so i mean it sounds like everybody's like that on the set yeah you really there's no reason to ever be like that and um you know, to, to be in that way of like oh i'm the star and everybody should be taking care of me um you know the, the biggest um celebrities and stars that i've worked with um are the the nicest people um you know tom hanks will get on the walkie talkie at the end of the night and thank the crews and he's thanking the guy who's up in the condor who's been 60 feet in the air all night who's like hey guys thank you good night you know so like when he leaves the set he makes a point of, of thanking everybody for being involved and and that's not as a, the director that's just as as an actor who's part of the process you know but but he understands that that his his role includes being um a good example and keeping up the overall morale and it really it becomes a feedback loop you know like as as a performer 
if you're um, kind to the people that you're working with, you're creating a better environment for you to do your job. Um, because it, then those people become more uh, supportive and encouraging um, and respectful when, when you need them to. You know, right. It's really, uh, it, it's great to see that, you know, especially on a small uh, a film like that. And, and it's a lot of pressure, you know, making an independent film is insane because you're, you're doing the impossible. Like every day you're doing something that um, you don't have the money for, you don't have the resources for, you don't have, you know, all, all of the things that you would want to do it. Um, you don't have and so you're having to invent you're having to create ways of doing it and you know a big part of film is that you know you're always doing more than what you're capable of you're always pushing yourself and if you're not then you're not really doing anything interesting and wow. so everybody's always working you know beyond their their normal capacity and, and doing something they've never done before so it's part of what's so exciting about it that that's got to be refreshing i mean i'm just sure you've been on those sets where people are like you know hey go do this go do that and nobody wants to pitch in it's got to mean more when people are everybody's pitching in yeah it's um you know this business it's too hard to be a job you know like like we we make our living at it um but you know they're long hours you know uh, my wife is working on a lifetime movie right now and you know she, her call time was 6 a.m uh, and she got home at midnight, you know, right. and, and it's an hour drive to the location, you know, so like that's, uh, that's a brutally long day. And she's hiking up and down, uh, you know, through the mountains to, you know, shoot the scenes and whatnot, carrying tons of gear. And it's brutal, you know, it's a tough, uh, it, it's a tough slog and, and you can't do it unless you love it. You know, so everybody that, that ends up in this business and stays is, are people like, like, you know, us that grew up in, being affected by movies and, and we love it. And it's, it's part of something that, that it really means a lot to us. And um, we wanna give back to um, this, this art form that has given us so much and so much of our personality is, is shaped by the things that we saw growing up and, and the movies that we see. Um, we wanna give back to that, uh, that idea, you know, that zeitgeist or whatever so that uh, other people can hopefully be touched by the work that we do. And yeah. to do that, you really have to be humble, you know, and, and the, the art, art is always greater than you, you know, so uh, you have to let go of ego and let go of, you know, whatever petty issues and, and whatnot, and let it be about um, doing the best that you can. Yeah, I've, I've heard so many things like about Keanu Reeves and how he takes uh, care of all his such people. A nice guy. Uh, I just, I just want to, I just want to meet the guy just to, just to hang out, you know, I don't yeah. care if you're, you're a movie star or whatever. I just think it sounds like a really cool guy and that's got to make it easier for everybody around him. Yeah. He, he's good people. My wife, when she first moved to LA, like one of her first jobs was, um, she was a personal assistant to his mom. Oh, wow. um, she had uh, broken her leg. And, and so uh, my wife was like, running errands and taking care of her and at one point uh she's uh, she sent her, my wife on a mission she's like oh can you go the same it's like oh just take the car and, and when it goes out she goes walking back it's like um that's a porsche it's like yeah it's just a car honey just take the car it's fine and she's like okay <laughs> <laughs> have you worked with any like prima donnas i'm trying to think if anybody um you know, the, the bigger actors that I've worked with have all been really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think if I've worked with anybody who was difficult. You know, there's definitely, you know, the, there's actors that because of their particular style, they need a lot of space. You know, they need people to not, you know, um, uh, make eye contact with them or, you know, distract them while they're filming. Um, one of the first films I worked on uh, had Barbara Berry in it and Ned Beatty. Um, I, I don't know if the audience knows Barbara Berry or not, but she was a brilliant actress. Uh, she, she was a wife on Barney Miller. <laughs> but um, anyway, she, uh, at one point, one of the crew members made eye contact with her during the scene because he was watching her and she looked up and made eye contact and it made her break character. And uh, she's like, get him off the set. And she actually got him fired for making eye contact, um, which... <sighs> It, yeah, it's a little bit of an overreaction, I think, you know, like, 
there, there's a more respectful way of doing that, but, um, but it, it is, it's serious work, you know, like it, it, it does get really difficult sometimes. Like I know, um, you know, there was that famous thing with, with Christian Bale where he sort of lost it. Uh, but he's, he's a hardcore professional and I can understand people that really, they're trying really, really hard to do something. And, um, it's incredibly vulnerable to perform, you know, um, and I, I think sometimes as crew members, you know, we forget that, um, that these people are really putting themselves out there and they're really trying hard. And, and again, everybody's trying to do something that they haven't done before. And they're trying to go to depths and they're trying to, uh, you know, reach into really painful places in order to give the best performance. And sometimes, um, you know, people forget to give them that space uh, because they're so busy trying to get their lighting set up or they're trying to get the boom in the right place or they're trying to do whatever. And so like, um, everybody has to be aware of what the other person needs to do their job, I think, in order for uh, things to go. And, and you do have tensions, you know, like even on, on the best sets, you're gonna have times where people um, brush up against each other. But I think, you know, if, if everybody comes from it with a place of love for the art, um, you know, then those things will work out. You know? and, and a lot of times, you know, you'll have actors that flare up and you hear the story about how awful they are. But then what you don't hear is like the next day, whoever they yelled at, you know, they probably went out and had a beer with and hung out with, you know, or th they did something really cool or helped them carry, you know, their equipment or whatever, you know. So it's you know, people I found aren't as awful as uh, they're portrayed to be. Yeah, I'd be one of those guys if somebody was staring at me while I was trying to do a scene, I would just bust out laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's, it's hard not to do that, actually. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's sad because there are people out there that get a bad rep, but they don't see, you know, what happens afterwards. Like you said, they probably go out and have a beer or something. Hey, dude, man, I didn't mean to get all pissed off. I was really into this scene. I mean, you look at some performances like, like Heath Ledger when he did The Joker. I mean, that that was intense. And and yeah. even, um, uh, oh, my God, uh What's his name? Uh, the guy that played the Joker in the newest one. Oh yeah, Jared. Uh, you know, not not Jared. Um, oh, uh, Ben Affleck. No, 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 no. Um, oh, Joke. Oh, Joker. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Phoenix. What's his name? Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, good night. You you got to put yourself in a certain mindset. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. But, it's crazy. I, I don't think of that as the same uh, Batman universe. You know, like it, it's its own movie in itself. Um, oh, that's what it's intended to be. Is yeah. that Joker movie is supposed to be set aside from everything else? Although they are talking about this new Flash movie being the uh, like the the jump off point for different universes because Michael Keaton's supposed to be in the new um, Flash movie, and oh, nice. he's going to be playing the Batman of of his universe and. I think Ben Affleck's supposed to be in it, and I I don't know if they're going to add a bunch of other ones to it or not. But uh, I'm, I'm real interested how they're going to do it. But um, if, yeah. has there ever been a time where you've met someone that's kind of been a hero and you're really let down? It's like I shouldn't have met him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. I can't say that, that I have, um, it, you know, I've certainly heard stories of people who are, are, are difficult, but I haven't worked with them uh, personally. Uh, most of the people that I've worked with have been pretty cool. And, and you know, I, I grew up, I, you know, I came up through, um, you know, the community in, in Texas and I, and, and, and with the idea that like, you know, if you're there as a, a crew member or whatever you're there to do your job you're not there to have an opinion about other people's job you're there to do the best that you can and so everybody kind of stays within their department a certain bit you know when you get on the bigger shows mm -hmm. so we really don't have a lot of direct interaction with um with some of the bigger stars uh until you get to a certain level until you, you're one of the actors or until you're you know the cameraman or the director or whatever but for the most part um there, there's a little bit of distance between you and, and some of the people um I, th I think my wife's definitely worked with some some people that uh, were a little more difficult because uh, she'd been a makeup artist for a while. So she was directly working with people. Um, 
but I can't think of anybody that I thought was uh, super cool and then worked with them and thought they weren't, you know. Uh, Come on, you can tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to think of somebody that, uh, that was a jerk. Uh, I said like the, the, the people that are kind of at the top of their game, you know, they might be a little bit, uh, you know, occasionally you'll have people that, that can be impatient, but generally, um, the more secure somebody is in their field, um, the nicer they are. So like when, when you have people that uh, lash out at, you know, the crew or at the other actors or at the directors, usually that's an insecure uh, performer or, you know, insecure director, or insecure, whatever, um, because it's somebody who's not at a level where they're okay with criticisms and they're okay with making mistakes. And, and really what a lot of it comes down to is like, you know, people are so afraid of making a mistake. People are so afraid of getting it wrong. So afraid of um, being seen as a fraud. Um, you know, because everybody has a, a, a bit of an imposter syndrome. Yeah. You know, uh, like you get on the set and you're like, oh, people are going to figure out, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know, because really we, we all don't know what the hell we're doing because we're making it up as we go. Like we're, like I said, we're constantly pushing uh, into new territory. So there, there is a vulnerability. And, and when people get vulnerable, some people handle that better than others. Um, first time directors tend to melt down a lot, um, which is, you know, one of the great things about, you know, uh, David and, and Craig, it's like, you know, this was, uh, David's first feature, I believe, and, and he was great. He was such a nice guy the whole time. And he really kept that, um, that love alive. And he kept that, um, feeling of safety for, for everybody on the set. And, and I, I, I was really impressed by that. Well, you know, doing what I do. And by no means am I like, you know, top of the tier here, but, you know, I, I do get to meet some pretty famous people from time to time. Um, most of them that I meet are actually very, very nice. Um, uh, do you remember Adrian Paul? Um, he was the Highlander back in the 90s. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I met him here in, in Austin and... Um, struck up a conversation with him, you know, I, I, I like to get to meet people and just talk to them. I don't, I don't care that, you know, I, yeah, it's great. You were in TV, you were on the movies and stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. But, you know, I like to get to know people for who they are. And so I'm sitting here and I'm talking to him. We spent 20 or 30 minutes with him telling me how to deal with my arthritis. So, <laughs> yeah. and you know, I'm like, Hey, you think you'd want to do a podcast interview? He goes, yeah, here. He hands me his, information and says ah, give, me, give me a call you know we'll set it up like sweet you know um i met mike coulter you know i'm like hey can we take a picture and he goes here he takes my phone out of my hand and you just start snapping them about like 30 pictures and like <laughs> dude you just filled up my phone you know <laughs> but real That's cool funny. you know yeah. and sat and talked to henry winkler and he was telling me about his uh children's book and he did a magic trick for my grandson and, and, you know, gave him a, a, a bookmark with his autograph on it. And I didn't ask him for that stuff. He just did it out of the kindness of his heart. You know, these kind of people are, are really freaking awesome. And of course I've met some that, you know, they were, I, I looked up to them and then I was like, I can't even look at their movies anymore. Um, Patrick Stewart was one of them. He was, he was just a real jerk to me. And I was trying to be real nice to the guy. And, you know, I understand, you know, if things are hectic or whatever. You're just sitting there not doing anything. And I'm not hounding you for an autograph. I just like, hey, I just want to come up and say hi. And it's like, I'm like, really? But, you know, but I get it. You're famous. You get hounded. People want autographs. They want pictures, things like that. Okay. Yeah. I, I understand it can be aggravating, but. These are also the people that, that pay for your mansions and your, your cars and all that fancy stuff. So yeah. treat them a little nice, you know? And, yeah, I think uh, that people in general, you just have to be, you have to be kind to everybody, you know, like whether you're you know, um, uh, well-known or not well-known or whatever. It's like, at the end of the day, we're all people, you know, it's all humans and, and we should just be nice to each other in general, you know, whether you're, you know, talking to the guy who's, you know, bringing you food or working at 7-Eleven or whatever, it's like, it, it, there's no difference, you know, it's like, we're, we're all just in the same boat, you know, just be nice exactly. to each other. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, the, I've tried to take that philosophy with me everywhere I've worked. And even when I was a supervisor, 
I didn't treat anybody any different. And you know, I wanted them to know that their part was always just as important as everybody else's. You know, I don't care if you're just starting out or if you have been there for years. And, you know, and you teach everybody what you can. And, and, and that's how things gel. That's how things work. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and I have met some people that I expected to not be so cool and end up being really, really cool. Um, met Cato Caitlin here in Austin. And that guy was freaking hilarious. <laughs> I, I've heard he's actually really nice. <laughs> he is a really nice guy. And, yeah. and, you know, it's like, hey, do you mind taking a picture? And he's like, okay, but you got to do these poses with me. And he's making us do all this crazy stuff. It's, it's, it was so fun. <laughs> we, we did a, an interview not too long ago. Uh, and uh, my, my son was doing sound with it. And we went to uh, Marion Ross's house. We were interviewing. Uh, she was the mom from Happy Days. Yeah. Um, and when we got there, she had made us brownies. And I'm like, you made us brownies? <laughs> like, that's insane. Like, like America's mom just made us brownies. Like, that was so wild to me. And she was so lovely. Like, such a, an amazingly kind person. But uh, th that's, you know, fortunately, like, that, that's that been my experience with, with most of the people that, um, that I've met. O occasionally, you know, I've, I've, I have run into people who were tired you know, or they're stressed or they've got something going on and, and they can be a little, um, a little short, but, you know, usually looking back on it, you know, I, I can kind of say like, well, you know, they were in a tough situation, but not, it probably wasn't the best time to say hi to them or whatever, you know what I mean? So like you, you don't always catch people on their best days, but I, I think when you have people that are consistently difficult and consistently rude to people, um, then that's really inexcusable. And, and there's plenty of, of, um, of famous performers and whatnot that are known for always being a jerk <laughs> you know and, and, and people have to take in consideration like you said sometimes it's not the best day um i i did a pilot for a show um it was a reality show and they would film us like driving in the driveway 10 different times i mean how many times can you walk in the freaking front door you know what i mean right. It's like, come on, dude, I'm, I'm sick. Of, and by the time the day's over, you're like, oh, I just want this to be over and done with. And unfortunately, they didn't pick it up, but, you know, it was still a fun experience. And I did learn, make sure you turn off your mic before you go to the back. <laughs> <laughs> or anything else. Uh, uh, there's plenty of stories. <laughs> Won't quite get into some of the stories we've heard. So of, of all the things that you do on, or you have done on set, what has been your favorite? Uh, well, all of it really. Uh, directing is, is the, for, for me, that's, that's the place where I'm like, I'm most engaged and I'm, I'm happiest because you, you know, you don't have any downtime. You're always on, you're always thinking, you're always trying to create something. Um, and, and when everything comes together, it's really it, kind of amazing. You, you get into this artist zone sometimes where it just feels like it's, it's almost like sort of transcendent where things just fall together in such an amazing way. And it's a, it, it's, it's a feeling and it becomes a, a rush, you know, and, and then you're like, I can't wait to make another project or get another thing off the ground so that I can have those moments on set, you know, and, and uh, it's not even about the finished movie because once it's over, it's over, it's done, but there, there's, there's always like that day where everything just falls into place and, and things that shouldn't work work. And you're just like, wow, this is, you know, you know the stars are aligning, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything's sort of working out perfectly for this. So that, that's, that's perfect, but it's all been really fun. I mean, um, you know, getting to shoot miniatures and special effects stuff was amazing. Um, you know, acting is, is a blast. Um, you know, it's its own intense challenge. Uh, cinematography like all of it is really um it, you know it, it takes so much to to get it right um and it's such a an incredible process and it, you know i do this because i love it you know and, and film is my family you know in a sense so like you know whenever i'm on a set working with other people who love making movies it's um it's a pretty incredible place to be awesome. um so do you have anything coming up um i'm working on a documentary right now that I can't quite say what it is yet uh, until we get a little further into it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one I'm producing and, and shooting and co-directing. Um, 
that was pretty intense, right? Really intense. Uh, a, a bunch of smaller projects. Uh, I, I had a, a short film that I wrote and shot um, that got into Cannes this year, uh, but then there wasn't Cannes, so that didn't happen. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just you know, doing the grind, doing a lot of things, working on a lot of TV shows. I think uh, I was just in an episode of. Uh, I was buried in the backyard, <laughs> which was just on. Uh, so, you know, a couple of acting gigs. I tend to play cops or killers a lot in uh, TV reenactment shows. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You know, I got a buddy of mine, comedian, and every time he gets a part, it's always a, like a drunk or a drug addict. I'm like, what are they trying to tell you, man? <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've had a chance to see it. I've, I've got the film Dry Blood. Uh, that's uh, came out the same year as uh, Evil Down the Street. Okay, is that on Amazon? Um, it is on Amazon. Uh, it's not on Amazon Prime anymore. It's it, but it is on uh, IMDb TV. Uh, okay. Uh, you can order it on Amazon. Uh, there's Blu-rays and all of that for it. Uh, it's also on uh, Tubi, and uh, I think on the uh, YouTube pay-per-view channel. Anyway, it's it's all over the place. It's pretty. But if you look up Dry Blood, uh, uh, it's uh, it's pretty dense. It's it's if you like horror films, um, love horror films, and it's uh, it's like a psychological thriller. You know, it's, it's got like a memento kind of vibe to it. You know, where you're never quite sure what you're seeing. So. If you want to see a good horror film, I'll send you my uh, first wedding video. <laughs> so you know i had just commented on that poster in the in the back when we first got on zoom and i'm like oh that's cool looking so that's what it is uh your movie dry blood yeah it's a, it's got a different poster um for the uh let me grab it actually i'll grab the uh the, the, the final go for it Yeah, this is uh this is what the new title looks like. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, little headless ballerina girl. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's a it's a really intense film. Okay, so give me a little little bit of a, a, a story behind it. Um, it's about a guy who's trying to get clean. Uh, he, he's a kind of a struggling, addict, and he goes to a a, a cabin that he. Uh, has with his wife, uh, his ex-wife, um, and he's trying to get, um, basically he's just trying to go cold turkey. So he's like, I'm going to get clean. I'm going to go out to this cabin and get get everything worked out. And and while he's there, he starts seeing ghosts uh, and these really horrific things start happening to him. And um, because he's going through withdrawal, he doesn't know if what he's seeing is real or if it's um, uh, part of the drug withdrawal. And so he kind of slowly descends into madness over the course of the of the film. But there's uh, it's intense, um, and and it's it's from the point of view of an unreliable narrator. Mm -hmm. um, so if your audience isn't familiar, it's it's when the person who's telling the story can't really be trusted. So you don't know if what you're seeing is actually happening or not happening because you're seeing it kind of through the point of view of the character. In the same way that that Memento had the same. Um, Christopher Nolan's first film had the unreliable narrator so that what you think is happening is not actually what's happening or it could be you know you don't quite know so he's a, was he a drug addict uh, yeah alcohol? yes yeah. Uh, alcohol and drugs kind of the whole thing like he, he's just a mess you know, wouldn't, wouldn't my buddy that played the part was <laughs> 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 But it's a, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting take on a ghost story, you know. So like it was. A lot well, of I like really, something, I like something a little different. So that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's a, it it did really well. Like it won best feature at the Bram Stoker Film Festival. Uh, it won Shiver. It won uh, a ton of awards. Like it it did really really well, uh, and the the festival circuit. It's definitely one of those films that like if you're, you know, uh, especially like a '70s film buff because it kind of has that little. Um, uh, kind of slow, slow burn. 
uh, build to it to where like it, it pulls you in and and then just explodes into this madhouse. Kid, I was talking to someone about those scary movies and stuff when I was when I was a kid and how much those scared me, but nothing scared me more than watching the trilogy of terror. Oh. I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, and it, then it just got to be gory, and when I hit my teenage years, you know, Freddy Krueger and stuff like that, it wasn't so much of the scary, it's just, the, you know, the blood and the slicing and all that stuff. But something that's a little different, right up my alley. Yeah, I, I don't know if you recognize the uh, uh, Arthur Grimsdyke on the, the wall of the picture. Um, that's from uh, a movie around the same time as Trilogy of Terror uh, called Tales from the Crypt, the Tales from the Crypt. Film. Okay. Yo, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's uh, Peter Cushing, who was uh, the Admiral in Star Wars. Yes, yes, Peter Cushing. I love those old movies, man. Yeah, it's nothing brilliant. like those old ones. Brilliant films. Yeah, I, I found that in a thrift store. Uh, that, that's actually like an old studio print, black and white print. No I'm kidding. Like, this is so freaking cool. It was like framed and everything. I'm like, this is this is awesome. It's amazing those little hidden gems you can find when you go to those little thrift stores and stuff. I I, I love it. I, I I found a bunch of old like seventies and eighties comic books in a thrift store we went to last weekend. Oh, nice. And, you know, I I still collect that stuff. I don't care if I am fifty years old. I'm still gonna collect that stuff. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm gonna be watching Star Wars and and Marvel movies till I'm dead. So yeah, if it makes you happy, you know, like that's. That's what it's for. It's there to, yeah. Yeah, bring you a little bit of that joy, you know. Exactly. And, I, and we need it. <laughs> you know, in these times, I was going to say, what's been keeping you occupied during all this pandemic? But you said you've been working on documentaries and stuff. That's. Yeah, a, a lot of a lot of just studying, like, um, you know, even though you know I got my uh, degree in the '90s, like I'm constantly studying with. Um, you know, mentors, you know, people that, um, uh, I've, I've got a friend that teaches directors how to direct, uh, better. His name's Mark Travis and he, uh, teaches like the, the DGA. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant mentor. Um, so I've been studying with him. I studied with, uh, Joanne Barron, uh, with the Meisner technique. I just went through a two year program with him. So it's, you're just it, constantly working to get better. Like that, that's the program that, uh, Sam Raimi went through. Okay. Uh, so well, Spider-Man thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of people um, that have really been great at at sharing. Um, one of my closest friends is uh, Sean Cunningham, who did Friday the Thirteenth um, and the House movies, the original. Um, oh, like with William Cat? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's just such uh, an incredible, like super nice guy, but he's also uh, a great mentor to filmmakers like he really you know there's there's several of us that that he works with um to to be better at at performing and be better at uh directing and finding the little moments and things like that and, uh, he's just been an incredible wealth of information and just a good guy you know I, i'm i know i'm at a very lower scale but when it comes to my editing and stuff and I, the stuff that I'm learning, I, I appreciate more when I see it in movies and television. Okay, I know what they did there. Cause I did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you cutting on? Uh, I use VSDC. Oh, um, I don't know that one. Um, it, it's a pretty simple program. Uh, I had to go on YouTube and go through each one. And I, that, that's how I learned. I, I, yeah. I didn't have anybody teach me. I just... I would sit there and I would try something and I'd watch the video and I'd pause it and then I'd go back and I'd try it. And I just kept doing it until finally I, I, I got the hang of it and uh, being able to like make pictures move and text come up on the page and, you know, taking splicing things out. Cause you know, there's a lot of times I'll, I'll be in the middle of a conversation and I'm like, ah, that was so stupid. Why'd I say that? And I got to cut it out, you know, and, or, you know, something happens, uh, I'm talking to somebody and the video pauses for a few minutes or, you know, right. oh, oh, excuse me, I've got to go do something, you know, little things like that happen all the time. And so, you know, it's like, I got to learn how to get this out of here. And uh, I'm enjoying it. 
I'd like to learn how to do uh, in a, on a more grander scale. That would be so cool. That, that kind of like, oh, that'd be my dream job. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, I got yeah, 15 more years. <laughs> there, there's a lot of like the, the technology is really pretty amazing. And, and you know, now you have things like lynda.com and you, where you can, um, you know, they, they have really great instructionals on, on how to learn, you know, anything specific you want to learn. But uh, YouTube is just such an incredible resource for learning everything from metalwork to editing to filmmaking. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool, you know, and, and the podcast, like you're doing, like this is a great thing for, you know, filmmakers to, to listen to and uh, to learn about uh, the, the craft and working with people and whatnot. So it's like, you know, all of it really, everything that you can do just makes you better. Uh, but there's, there's a great, uh, like I'm learning DaVinci Resolve right now, uh, which uh, it's almost like starting over editing wise. Um, like I've, I've worked with Avid and Final Cut and, and Premiere, but Resolve's like, it's got its own little thing. So like every, like even the simplest things that I'm doing, I have to look up on YouTube to figure it out. Um, but it's, it, it's cool, you know, like always be learning. Yeah. yeah, it's good to have a bunch of different things in your back pocket anyway, because you, you know, you never know. There's you know, I've, I've done the same job for 20 years, but at one city, it may be different than it is in another city. So you, you always, you have to be open to learn. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. It, I mean, if you want something just to tool around with VSDC, look it up. It's actually a pretty decent program. There's a free version and there's a paid version. And uh, there, there's always something new coming up every month, it seems, on there. And... Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love for some other stuff to pop up on there. I get to learn how to, to do with pictures and stuff, but the, mm -hmm. the transition from one scene to the next or whatever, I've, I've learned not to just cut right into the next scene, how to blend it in and things like that. Love it, man. I love it. There, there's a, a free shareware program. If you get into doing visual effects, mm -hmm. uh, there's a program called Blender, which is basically, um, it, it, like a lot of like high-end effect people that I know are actually kind of moving over to, to Blender, people that have been working in Maya and, and some of the higher-end programs. But it, it's amazing some of the stuff that you can do there. I mean, because you can do Star Wars level effects with these things and really amazing um, green screen work, build entire environments. Um, but check out Blender. Check out, there's some videos that people have done, uh, examples of the, the work that they've done with it. Blender. Okay, I wrote that down. Yeah, and it's a, it's free. You can download it and just learn. it's shareware. That's that's uh, right up my alley if it's free. Yeah, <laughs> fits the budget. <laughs> right now, I can barely afford to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about before we end the show? Um, no, but you know, just. Thank you for your time and, and for inviting me out. This has been really, uh, really cool. Man, I appreciate you. Um, and, and where can people find you or find your work? Um, like I said, a, a lot of it's on uh, Amazon Prime um, and on uh, IMDb TV. TV. I know uh, Evil Down the Street uh, and Drive Letter are both on those platforms. Um, and you know, it's, hard to, it's hard to say because like, there's always uh, new platforms coming out, new projects. So... You know, I'm on uh, Instagram, Kelton Jones Official, so uh, anybody wants to follow me, I don't know if anybody wants to follow me, but there I am. <laughs> you know, people are going to want to. They're going to want to see what you got coming up. And if you have anything new coming out that you'd like to, to get out there and talk about, man, you just let me know, and, and the show is yours. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, we're always working on stuff. So, uh, you know, we, we can't talk about uh, projects until they get to that point where we're ready to, you know, reveal them to the world, but, you know, but, uh, but there's definitely, you know, things in the works and, and some cool projects. So I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Well, I appreciate that, man. And everybody that joins us and watches in and, or listens to us on the podcast, thank you. Um, without y'all support, we wouldn't be here. And, uh, and, and if you haven't already subscribe, follow us, uh, I put the, the uh, links up on, on all of our posts and in our videos to, uh, to everything. 
So if you have any links that you'd like to share, if you will email them to me, I will put those in the description. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast.